This video is kind of out of the blue. Um, I don't know what to do, so I figured, you know what, let's just make a video about how to stay safe on a beach because that sounds it's like so much fun. Let's get started. Roll that intro and we'll get the party going. Okay, so beach safety. And the first one that I want to discuss is rip currents and how to identify them. So this is probably one of the most reoccurring events that you know a lot of people see at the beach. You know, you can watch Bondi Rescue. I don't know if you know any Australians, Bondi Rescue, you know, half the time. People get swept out in a rip current and they're out of their depths and they start freaking out. This is why I wanted to have this one as the number one topic on this video. So how do we identify them? Well, you see, so typically in a rip current, <coughs> there will be a split between the breaking incoming waves. So usually you'll see rolling waves coming into the shoreline. If you see a split, between two rolling waves and the right here is the split you've got two waves either side and they keep going forward you've got a split down the middle that's usually a rip current and that's where everyone's going to get swept away at the back behind the breaking waves now there are several other ways that you can identify rip currents out in the water or on the shore these are choppy churning water a calm section that you can potentially see behind the waves on shore, any debris or logs or what else would there be? Sea foam out in the middle of nowhere, typically a rift. Um, or if you see any darker or discolored water, so say you've got your beautiful emerald water at the beach and at the back there's some real dark water that's typically a rip or a massive shark you know either either however it's quite difficult to tell whether or not there's a rip from the shoreline if you're not necessarily looking out for one so the best thing that you can do is ask the lifeguards on duty typically they'll have a notice board or they'll have a sign saying strong rips or rips moving you east or rips moving north or you know they'll tell you where the rip is and they'll tell you where it'll put you or they'll say how strong it is and they'll say to keep safe swim within your depths that's usually a sign that there's a strong rip out there and you shouldn't swim out to where you can't feel the bottom all right number two okay focus come on focus there we go number two what you need to do in a rip number one do not panic okay that's what i see a lot of people doing i understand okay i get it don't panic i understand why you wish to panic you can't feel the bottom you're out of your depths and you're in an area that you do not know you know what could be out there there could be sharks there could be something else that wants to attack me i'm not going to survive i'm probably going to drown okay this is not necessarily going to happen if you are caught in a rip where you feel yourself getting swept out and you can't feel the bottom go with the flow sit back let the water take you at some point it's going to stop and you can swim back to shore however don't just sit there and do nothing okay if you're being swept out and you can see people in front of you or lifeguards chuck a hand up ask for help yell out for help wave your hand around Try not to tie yourself out, that's the last thing you want to do, but just casually wave your hand around. Someone, I guarantee, will see you if it's not a lifeguard. It will be one of the locals, be it a surfer or a strong swimmer, will come out and collect you. Now, if you're worried about getting attacked by sea life, I can tell you now that there is a very, very, very low chance of that happening if you are swept in a rip current. The NOAA did a study in 2015 which showed that rip currents killed more people than bushfires, than 
cyclones or hurricanes, then shark attacks, all put together. So rip currents and drowning are one of the worst things on our beaches. Okay, you should be worried more about rip currents than sharks when you go to the beach. The best way to avoid it, don't be an idiot, swim within your depth. If you are caught in one, chuck a hand up, someone's gonna get you. If not, you can swim back to shore once the rip current has taken you behind the breaking waves. Catch a wave back in and you are good to go. Next question. Topic number three. Actually, I just said question number three. I keep saying question rather than topic, okay? It's quite annoying. So from now on, if I say question, then I'm gonna scream. All right, topic number three. And this one is read the damn notice board. There is a notice board on or near the breaking waves down at the beach. And these notice boards are typically set up by lifeguards to let swimmers know what is happening in the water. Okay, if you are not fluent in English, ask a lifeguard on duty. Lifeguards are typically known or wear this type of stuff. Ask one of these people and they will guide you and help you to understand what the conditions are like out in the surf. Make sure you stay safe and nothing happens to you and you can enjoy your swim. So on these notice boards you will typically have I think four things and these will typically tell us if there are rip currents, the direction of the rip, uh, if there are any jellyfish and what the swell conditions are like. What I mean by swell is that the waves, you know, are they dumping waves, are they crashing waves? They'll typically tell us all this type of stuff. Sometimes it even tell us the temperature of the water. All right, topic four. All right, so topic number four is quite an obvious one, okay? I probably don't need to say it, but I probably do need to say it, and that's probably why it's here. Not so much at the start, not so much at the bottom, but it is necessary. You've probably figured it out already. If it means going to the beach and you are competent, swim between the damn flags, okay? The flags are there for a reason. Swim between them. I don't care if you're a strong swimmer, if you're goddamn Ian Thorpe's blood brother and you can swim like a graceful mermaid through those waters, merman, I don't know. Swim between the damn flags, okay? One, it makes a lifeguard's job way easier because they can monitor the area, and two, you know it's a safer area because the lifeguards put the flags there, and it means that you can swim, it's safe, and it's monitored. Swim between the flags. Topic number five. Okay, so topic number five applies to the entirety of Australia as well as, I'd say, the world. I don't even know why I need to specify that. But stinger season. Ah! Okay, look. So stinger season, jellyfish season, is not as bad as it sounds. It might be bad in some parts of Australia, but overall it's not that bad, okay? Well, in the northern parts, you've got your uric angi and your box jellyfish. Okay, so that's pretty bad. Two of the most dangerous, deadly jellyfish. Um, so yeah, if you're in the northern parts and it's stinger season, I would probably say don't enter the water. Um, even with you, like if you've got stinger suits and there are hirugans in the water, uh, I'm pretty sure their nematocysts or their stinging cells are still able to penetrate through the stinger suits. Don't quote me on that, I'm not 100% sure. But last time I read any journal article, it kind of stated that, um, yeah, the nematocysts were quite small and they could pierce through the nylon fabric. Best way to avoid it, don't go in the water if you're in the northern parts of Australia. You'll thank me later. Because if you are stung by any of these two jellyfish, uh, I can tell you it's not going to be a pretty sight. Okay, the jellyfish will bring any colossal giant to its knees, especially the uric energy. So, overall, nothing's really stopping you. 
okay, from going into the water. If you're in the northern parts, nothing's stopping you. Except for the uh, impending sting that'll come from one of these two jellyfish, which will cause intense pain, as well as swelling, uh, and possible leakage of the potassium channels in your system. Uh, this is called hyperkalemia. Okay, that's the leakage of potassium channels. Not fun. Very painful. Uh, and uric angie syndrome which leaves a uh, sense of impending doom as you slowly die but you'll be fine it's okay you just hop, hop in the water in all seriousness though be safe it's stinger season all right so in the northern parts as i said you do have uric angies you do have box jellyfish would advise going into the water if you're down here down the coast uh, then you'll just get your uh, blue bottles, not dangerous unless you're allergic to them. Uh, you'll get a slight sting with, you know, swelling. It might be painful, it might be not. You know, sting factors do vary between people's pain thresholds. But stay safe, don't be stupid. Um, and yeah, enjoy your swim down the beach because that's what you're meant to do. Don't worry about all this because it's will usually be covered by lifeguards. They will protect your ass when you're out in that water. Beach police, gotta love them. All right, so that was a real quick video. Um, I just wanted to get something out to you guys, you know, something that can help uh, and something that can be relatable to a lot of people that are down the beach and they might be like, oh, okay, yes. These are things that we do need to keep in mind when uh, before going into the water. So, reiterate, Real quickly, rip currents, you notice boards, make sure you pay attention, swim between the flags. If it's stinger season, you just look it up online, usually it's at the start uh, and near the end of the year, sometimes mid-year, depending on where you are. And uh, yeah, respect the beach police, because they are there to protect you. All right, so I hope you enjoyed that video. Quick, easy, in and out, done and dusted. Be sure to um, click the video, whatever side this is going on. It's you know one of the, one of these two sides over here. Mirror to educate, don't eradicate. Like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And I will see your beautiful faces in another video coming to you very shortly. Bye bye.